Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking math, uh, Saxon 7 out of the Math 76 book. Math, Saxon 7, I can't even talk today. Saxon 76, Math 76 out of the Saxon book. It's the third edition, guys. So if you're following along at home, make sure you have the correct one. Uh, today we're on lesson 10, which is on page 43. And we're gonna talk about sequences and scales. Sequences you may be familiar with. You've probably seen things like this. Uh, let's say we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then it says find the next three numbers in that sequence. Well, we take a look and one plus one uh, gives us two, two plus one gives us three, three plus one gives us four, so on and so forth. And do you see how we're adding one each time? So that means if we add one to here, we get six, add one to here, we get seven, add one to here, we get eight. That was a pretty easy sequence, but sometimes they can be a little trickier. Uh, let's do this. Let's say we have 1, 2, 5, 10, 17. Okay, so when you get sequences uh, and, and you're asked to find the next few digits, um, the what I want you to do is take a look at them. Very first thing you do is look and see if you can find something that is, what, what am I doing? Am I adding or subtracting a specific number to get the next one? Sometimes it'll just be uh, plus, actually before we even go into this one, let's do this. One, four, seven, 10, 13, find the next three ones. So as I was saying, for some of these easier ones, take a look. If one plus three gives us four, plus three gives us seven, plus three gives us 10, plus three gives us 13. Well then to find the next three, we're gonna do plus three gives us 16, plus three gives us 19, plus three gives us 22. Okay, so sometimes they're easy like this. You just find uh, the difference between the two numbers. Um, sometimes they go backwards though. What if it's uh, 19, 17, 15, find the next three digits. Well, we go from 19 to 17, we have to subtract two, right? From 17 to 15, we subtract two. From 15, we subtract two, we get 13. We subtract two, we get 11. Subtract two, we get nine. And so you're seeing that sequence or that pattern right there. Um, but sometimes they get a little trickier and that's the one that I had written down that I just erased that I uh, think that they get a little bit trickier. Sometimes it's not as easy as just figuring out how many you're adding or subtracting, right? Right here, if we add one, we add three, looks like here we have to add five, plus seven, sometimes the sequence is hiding or the, the series is hiding. The pattern here is hiding within those numbers that are um, that we're using, okay? So one, three, five, seven, I bet the next one's gonna be plus nine. Do you see that? that that's the pattern that we're going with. Um, so 17 plus nine gives us 26, okay? So plus nine, but then we're gonna do plus 11, right? So we look at that and we get 37 plus 13 will give us 50, okay? So sometimes you have the actual pattern to the sequence is in these numbers, not the numbers that are shown. So be sure to find those differences. Uh, another one that you'll see is uh, 1, 3, 9, 27, find the next three. Well, looking at this guy, this is plus two, this is plus six, this is plus 16, 18, I don't know how to add today. So two, six, 18, that's not making any sense right there. When that happens, there's another trick for solving these. What you can do is take this number divided by this, and what do we get? Three divided by one equals three. All right, let's try that again. And did you notice I started with the second number, the, the one that the greater number? This divided by that, well, that's nine divided by three, which equals three. Okay, all right, all right. I bet if we do 27 divided by nine, we will get three. Oh, okay, so we're dividing by three. So what we're actually doing is multiplying by three because we're going up, right? So we're gonna times this, so times that by three. I'm not gonna do that off the top of my head. So 27 times three, we get 81, 81, I knew that. I don't know what I'm thinking. But then we times this by three and we get 243. And then we times that by three. These are all powers of three. You'd think I would know them by now, but I don't. Is 720, 
nine. So there's another trick. If you can't identify what is what the sequence or the pattern is here, try that little trick that I did where I took this one and divided by this, took this, divided by that, took this, divided by that, right? And that gave us a hint, well, they all have three in common, and sure enough, if I multiply by three, okay? Um, all right, so let's take a look at some of these other examples. And that was the first example, by the way. Let's look at some of these other ones. Uh, think of a whole number, double that number. This is example two. Think of a whole number. And remember, whole numbers are uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4. Whole numbers include all those counting numbers plus 0. So uh, think of a whole number and double that number. Is the answer even or odd? Well, let's test this theory. Let's think of another number, 7. If I double 7, and remember doubling it just means times 2, right? That gives us 14. Hmm. All right, so that's even. What about if I do four? That's an even number to start with. Here we started with an odd number. I don't know why it doesn't focus. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, so here we start with an odd number. Uh, so let's try an even number here. Uh, four times two, that's gonna give me eight. Well, so far, all of my answers are even. Let's try another one. 10 times two, that gives me 20. Let's try 101 times two, that's gonna give me 202. Look at all of these are going to be even numbers. So your answer, if you double it, is always going to be even, always going to be even. And that makes sense because I'm multiplying by two and all even numbers can be divided by two, right? So, good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are scales. And we kind of went through that with, oh, I have golden retriever air everywhere. Duh. Um, we kind of talked about that on uh, the rulers when we were talking about linear measure. And finding the scale of something can be a little difficult. So what I'm gonna do, I will need to show you how this guy works right here. In fact, I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna get my other book that doesn't have... All right, so what I was saying was, uh, I'm gonna get the book that doesn't have all the answers. That was the teacher edition. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this guy. Um, we're looking at this scales, I'm on page 45 here, page 45. I'm gonna try and get this a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Let's test my technological abilities here, kids. Ooh. Ah, that is not correct. Whoop. That is better. All right, so right here, We've got these, this scale, you see this? All right, so this guy is showing that um, on one side we have the Fahrenheit and one side we have the Celsius, okay? Um, what it's asking though is the scale of these things. What do these dashes mean? What do these dashes mean? Well, on the Celsius side, you see that it's broken up from zero to 100. And it looks like we have from zero, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means from zero to 100 in chunks of 10, uh, we are going, each one is gonna be worth 10. And sure enough, 37 is gonna be really close to 40. So we go zero, 10, 20, 30. 40 is gonna be here, so uh, 37 is gonna be like right underneath there, okay? Now, it's a little difficult on this side of things to figure out what that scale is gonna be, but on this side, that gives you kind of an understanding of it. Um, let's look at example number three here. Example number three. Let's see if I can get this a little bit lower without totally blinding everybody. All right, so right here, what we have is uh, 0, 10, and 20. But look, we've got some increments in here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 increments between 0 and 10. Now, there's not 5 numbers between 0 and 10, but uh, we can break it into groups of uh, or uh, into 5 different groups is what I'm trying to say. If we do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
two, four, six, eight, ten. So oftentimes what you'll see on these scales is that they're going to be, if it's between uh, two, like zero and ten like this, it's probably going to be worth two. You'll never see it worth three because that doesn't work out evenly. Um, but you will see four because you'll have a dash and that's one fourth and then another dash. So each chunk will be worth four. Um, or you'll see it, each chunk is worth one. But in this case, each chunk is worth two. So at zero degrees, this is two, four. So the correct answer here would be four degrees Fahrenheit, four degrees Fahrenheit. While we're on that subject, I'm actually just gonna jump right ahead to D and I want you to take a look at this guy and then I'll move my book and we'll go back into the others. Um, okay, taking a look at this guy, go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out what that scale is. All right, when you come back, what we'll talk about is, okay, we have 10 to 20, 20 to 30. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five little chunks in there, right? And there's normally 10 between 20 and 30, 21, 22, 23, right? Um, so if we break that up into five different chunks, they're gonna be worth two, because five times two is 10. So uh, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, all right? So looking at this, this is gonna be 22 degrees Celsius. Now on the Fahrenheit side, again, we have 70 to 80, but we've got one, two, three, four, five chunks there, five chunks. So again, those are gonna be worth two. So 70, so it's about 72, do you see that? Uh, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, okay? Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna back this guy up a little. All right, so we, ooh. All right, so on this guy, Let's try that. All right. Technologically, I am just a brilliant superstar, you guys. You wish you could be as technologically advanced as me. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, what I want you to do now is we're going to go back to those practice problems. And I'm on page 45. We're going to do practice problems A, uh, B, and C. So for A, so go ahead and pause now. Give those a shot and then come on back. We have A is 27, 36, 45. Come on. Uh, okay, so guys, for the other thing for learning about sequences is going to be um, the you're going to want to know your multiplication chart, know your multiplication table, okay? Know your multiplication tables because uh, immediately if you know your multiplication tables, you can look at this and you identify, hey, those are all multiples of nine. This is times two, nine times two. This is nine times three, nine times four, nine times five. 9 times 6, 9 times 7, 9 times 8. So if we know those, 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 8 is 72. Good. Um, okay, so then what we've got is uh, take a peek at the next one, which is going to be, there it is. Okay, so that was A. For B, we've got one, two, four, eight, one, two, and three, dot, dot, dot. I forgot my little dot, dot, dot up there. One, two, four, and eight. Huh. Well, like I said before, um, this is going to be plus one, plus two, plus four. Well, that doesn't really make sense, so let's get rid of that. That's not giving us a good pattern. So another tip is to take this divided by that, and we get two divided by one equals two. This divided by this. Oh, I'm starting to see something emerge here. Eight divided by four, two. All right, all right. So one times two is two. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Times two uh, is 16, right? Uh, times two is 32. Times two is 64. So those are your answers there. Those are your answers there. Good. All right, for C, think of a whole number and double that number and then add one to it. So think of a number and double it and then add one to it. Well, we talked about this before. If you double a number, it's always going to be even. If you, so if it's always even and you add just one number, it's going to be odd. So for C, it's always going to be odd. All right. And then we did D and E. So you are good to go, guys. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you for our next lesson. Thanks, guys.